Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, I will show you three ways on how to summarize or analyze your data. So let's get started. Analyzing your data is one of the most crucial aspects in terms of making decisions. Gaining insights and understanding what the data is and how it can help you in your decision making. So here we have a sample data set to look at so we can illustrate using the three methods I mentioned earlier. So here we have a sample data set comprised of companies and these companies have different information from the exchange that they belong to to the ticker symbol all the way to the gross profit margin that they earn. So we'll try to summarize make sense of each of those variables using the three methods. So the first method we'll be focusing is how to tabulate or create a frequency distribution. So in order to do that, uh, we need to use Excel's pivot table. So simply select and insert tab, go to pivot table and a window will appear and it will ask you to display or select the data set, which I already did. And then it will ask you where do you want it to be displayed. So you have two options, a new worksheet or an existing one, meaning the same page, which I prefer. So simply select an unoccupied cell and select OK. And you have a pivot table that's blank as of the moment. On the right side, you can see the pivot table field list, which it indicates all of the variables in your data set. So let's start by summarizing first the exchange variable. Simply drag it under uh, row labels and then drag again under values. Then automatically you can see it's already summarized. So it shows the different categories. American Express, you also uh, exchange, not Express, New York Stock Exchange, and then you also have OTC or over the counter. You can see the total sample size, which is 25. And then you can already see that majority of the companies listed here are uh, belong to the OTC or over the counter, which is 17. Now, another variation of a frequency distribution that you can create is by creating a percent frequency by selecting any of the frequency count here, right clicking and then go to show values as, and then select percent of column total. And automatically you can see it's converted to percent frequency. It can show that 68% belongs to OTC. Now, if you were to do the same for the other variables, so let's uh, try it again, same process. In this case, let's display it below the exchange. Select OK. In this case, let's select ticker symbol to summarize. So row label, then values. So you can see here that each of the ticker symbol here uh, belongs to each of those companies, which is unique to those companies. So let's try to summarize, in this case, market cap. So let's display it beside here. Then let's drag market capitalization and under values. Now make sure that under values it says count since in my case says sum, so you have to change it. Go to field setting or value field settings and change it to count. And if you notice your row, under row labels, all of your values are indicated. Now in order to summarize that, you need to group them together. So right click any of the values, then go to group. Now here, Excel would suggest uh, using the lower and upper limit here as well as the in interval necessary. Now, I would strongly suggest to simplify it using round numbers so it's easier to read later on. Instead of 23, let's make it zero. Instead of 295, let's make it 300, a round number. And then uh, rule of thumb here. So uh, the rule of thumb is you always using or create at least four intervals. Depending on the sample size, fewer, four is minimum. Then the more sample size that you have, you can create more. So it's a sort of trial and error here. So let's experiment with creating, let's say, intervals of 50. And you can see here, so you can see a distribution here. It's spread apart. So our analysis here, we can see that majority of the company's market capitalization is uh, between 50 to $100 million here. And if we were to do the same, so let's analyze the other values. So instead of market cap, let's focus now on price per earnings. Since it's quantitative again, we have to change it to count, then group them together. So let's use zero as the lower limit, then 70 as the upper limit, and let's use 15 as an interval. 
Then we can see here under price per earning, the highest count is under 0 to 15. Then let's do one more for gross profit margin. It says sum, so we have to change it to count again. Then group them together. So the value is 4 to 74. So to make it round, let's start with 0. And all the way to 80, then intervals of let's make it 20. So we can see it's grouped together, that's nice. Then the highest frequency is between 20 to 40 percent, and that's how we summarize it using tabulation or one variable. Now we could use uh, visual visualization next or using graphs and charts. So to do that, so let's select this frequency distribution for exchange. Let's move the variables here. Okay, so to create a chart in this case, uh, simply select any of the frequency here, then go to option tab here. Now for others, uh, other version of your Excel, you may see an analyze tab there. You can select that. Once inside, you can see it, uh, the icon or uh, the word pivot chart, and then select that. Since our data here is qualitative, uh, we, we need to create a bar graph here. So select OK. And we have a bar chart. Now we need to refine this further, removing the grid lines, the legends, and hide all the value field settings. Now we need to add some labeling. So for the X axis, so that's for exchange. Then for the Y axis, it's frequency. Then for our title, it's frequency on exchange. And obviously you can obviously you can see here that your frequency distribution here and your bar chart here conveys the same message, only with different uh, visualizations here. So OTC has the higher bar or higher frequency visually, and then here you have the higher uh, percentage of frequency here. Now, if you were to summarize the other variables here, let's say market capitalization. Uh, one thing to note, since market caps values are numeric, so you need to create a histogram here. Now, the same process would apply here still. So in my case, go to options, select pivot chart. Now, it would still select a bar chart here, so we have to make one slight adjustment here to create a histogram simply right click any of the bars and then go to format data series and then uh, go to gap width and reduce it to zero once you've done that you have a histogram now let's refine it further removing again the grid lines the legends hide the value field settings and then la proper labeling so we need the x-axis here in this case it's market cap then for the y-axis, it's frequency again. Then for the title, frequency on market capitalization. So again, it conveys the same message. Here you can clearly see the highest bar or interval is between 50 to 100. So it's the same as the frequency distribution. So you can do the same for price per earnings and gross profit margin. It will still convey the same uh, result. So we've done tabular and graphical for one variable here. How about if you want to summarize two variables? So we can still use the same method, tabulating using graphs and numerical measures. So for tabulation, we call that a cross tabulation. Do that let's move the variables oh, that, that's okay so we repeat the same process just like before great using a pivot chart so let's display it here on the same page so instead of just summarizing one variable we can summarize two at the same time so let's use exchange on under row labels then let's use market capitalization under column labels now for the value you choose any of the variables would it, uh, it wouldn't matter so here we have the cross tabulation so what does this mean uh, how would you interpret this now going back to the previous tabulation that we did earlier so you can see the 
uh, tabulation for the exchange and you can see the total here which is the frequency earlier that we did same goes for the market capitalization here for the columns you can see the total at the bottom now the main difference that how that you know that this is a uh, cross tabulation is the breakdown of the frequencies within the variables so let's highlight this to see which stands out here so you can see the highest frequency is uh, between the uh, all over the counter and with a market capitalization between 50 million to a hundred million dollars here so the advantage here it, sh it shows the pattern within if there's a decreasing pattern so as you can see here for American exchange uh, it has only between 50 0 to 150 capitalization while New York Stock Exchange has between 100 to 200 while OTC has a uh, spread from zero all the way to 300 million dollars and the advantage of uh, using a cross tabulation uh, you can use any type of data here it can be both qualitative data can be both quantitative data and in this case can be a mix of both here uh, next we can use a scatter plot to visualize the relationship between two variables now take note when crafting a scatter plot one has to uh, be mindful that you can only accept quantitative data so in this case uh, only market cap price earnings and gross profit fit the criteria so let's select market cap and price earnings here so go to insert tab and select a scatter plot simple as that and then you have the scatter plot here so let's edit it a little bit remove the grid lines the legends and obviously again proper labeling for the x-axis that's the market capitalization and then for the y-axis you have the price earnings ratio and then for our title so you have price per earnings and market cap now what does the relationship convey here in your scatter plot so uh, there are three possible relationships that you can see. Is it positive, negative, or no relationship? Now, one of the strengths of a scatter plot, you can easily see the relationship here. The, the down or the downside or the con here is it's difficult to really visualize what type of relationship is it clearly going up, trending downward, and so forth. So it's not as clear cut here. That's why our third method here uh, using numerical measures in particular measures of two uh, measuring two variables here the relationship between two variables uh, using correlation coefficient to describe the relationship will give us a better insight so to do that uh, we go to data tabs and select data analysis now for those who don't have data analysis you can check out my other videos how to enable it and for those who don't have uh, have it enabled uh, you need to download the analysis tool pack uh, in Excel uh, go to microsoft.com to download the add-ins once you have that uh, simply select correlation and select OK and then once you've selected select the both columns here which uh, I already did then make sure it's grouped by columns and then check the box for labels and then output it let's use the same page so let's do it below then let's select okay so what does this mean so let's arrange it center align it okay so what does this mean 0.52 so one has one has to understand that the correlation coefficient has a range of values so in this case the range starts from negative one to positive one meaning uh, if it's exactly one you get a perfect relationship if it's zero uh, there's no relationship there uh, typically the correlation lies somewhere between zero and one so if it's closer to one whether it's positive or negative it has a strong relationship if it's closer to zero uh, it has weak relationship and if it's exactly between one and zero it's moderate now in this case since it's 0.52 you could say it's strong or moderate and positive here so what does this simply mean or what's your interpretation meaning that for every unit increase in market capitalization there's a moderate increase as well in your price earnings or vice versa 
and that's how it helps you better understand the data so you can try to correlate the other variables as well to see which has a more significant or stronger relationship here anyway speaking of numerical measures so uh we can use uh me another type of measure measures of location to understand the data and measures of variability to better understand the data here so let's move the data let's insert the, oh, sorry. Let's insert the columns move so obviously when you're using numerical measures here your data has to be quantitative by nature so let's select market cap as an example here now to do that simply go back to data tabs again select data analysis in this case we will select descriptive statistics select ok then select the column it's already selected make sure the group uh, it's grouped by columns then check the box for labels then check the box for summary statistics and then finally display it in the same page in my case then select OK. So you can see here there are summaries for the different uh, numerical measures here. So let's focus on the two most common that we, we will be using often. You have measure of location, the mean, which is 112. You have measure, numerical measure of variability, which is the standard deviation, which is 75.9 or 76. So what does this mean? So let's start first with the mean. So the mean is the average as mentioned. So 112, right? Meaning, if a company earns higher than 112, meaning the company is doing well or earns high, substantially higher, so whether to invest in that would be more likely, right? Then if a company's market capitalization is lower than 112, maybe you're less likely to invest because they have a smaller capitalization, less value in a sense. And then in terms of standard deviation, how dispersed is your data here? In this case, how dispersed the, dispersed the market capitalization? So, so as low as 23 million to as high as almost 300 million so it's spread uh, apart uh, in a large spectrum here meaning whether to invest on which company which has more potential and so forth will be based in your uh, analysis using the mean and standard deviation and as you can see here uh, to sum up that many of the methods that I discussed today whether tabulating or using graphs or in this case using numerical measures gives you different insights to your data set here which is very substantial if you you know consider about it and it's not easy being able to understand it without going to this basic process here and obviously uh, it takes time to master it but if you practice it over and over uh, you'll be able to have a better understanding of your data and and you're on your way to better uh, on your way to make better decisions to help yourselves uh, and a social company here anyway that concludes our video for today if you find this video helpful don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button also leave your comments down below to suggest other topics for future videos for more guides tutorials and tips you can check out my other videos thanks for watching i'll see you the next one